Hello students, this is Fadan Mirza. We are discussing the mitotic cell cycle and I'm using Mary Jones as my resource and uh, CJ Clegg. So first just discuss a few points from the CJ Clegg book only. Uh, why, do we, why do cells undergo division? For growth, for, uh, for uh, developing and for differentiation, multicellular organisms keep growing so that they can form tissues and they can allow repair to occur as well. And unicellular organisms, they grow, they, they form colonies, they divide, and they rapidly spread out over a re region where the nutrients are available or the conditions are favorable. What is, the, what is the importance of the nucleus? The nucleus is having the hereditary material. The hereditary material is having the genes. The genes, you know, they are having segments of DNA, which can code for a polypeptide. So these are present in the nucleus of the cell. So where are genes located they are present on the chromosomes they control the activities of the cell they uh, the chromosome must be copied from cell to cell when the cell divide and are passed on from new cells to the next cell and in sex cells when sex cells are produced half of the chromosomes are gone there so the gametes can fuse together to form another cell the zygote which will have the same number of chromosomes so the number of chromosomes, uh, the, the concept of chromosome must be introduced first. So what is chromosome? Chromosomes is actually DNA condensed in, in, in a condensed form. The DNA condenses because of some proteins that it gets wrapped around. The proteins are called histone proteins, which we'll discuss later. So chromosome uh, is, have a, is thick and long, and they are, uh, we are having linear chromosomes in our eukaryotic cells. And the circular uh, DNA is present in the mitochondria and chloroplast, whereas the bacteria is having a circular only they do not have linear dna so our chromosomes are linear so they appear linear and they they stain very thick with and they stain very conspicuous we using certain dyes uh, but the chromosomes only appear when the cell is about to undergo cell division or when the cell is dividing when the cell is in, a, in any other stage of its life uh, any other stage in a non-dividing state and it is not yet decided to divide the chromosome will not be condensed. Rather than being condensed, it will appear in granular or thin threads, a meshwork appearance, and that those granular appearance is called as chromatin. The chromatin and chromosome basically are just the difference in the appearance because of whether the DNA is condensed or not. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. It is having two paired strands. Uh, it, is a, it is a double helix. And the DNA is a very long molecule. It's one, one entire chromosome, one chromatid of a chromosome is actually one DNA molecule. So you have, uh, if you have 46 chromosomes, it means you have 46 DNA molecules at one point in your cells. But they change, that change when the DNA undergoes replication. Uh, the shape of the chromosome is a characteristic. The chromosomes are identified on the basis of their shape, the basis of the position of the centromere, the length the chromosomes are having and they can be stained using different stains, for example, GMSA, and those stains can tell you which chromosome is actually its partner. Uh, because chromosomes, they occur in pair, they are homologous chromosomes, so every chromosome in, 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 in our body is actually having a homologous partner or member with itself, uh, of itself. So uh, half of the homologous chromosomes, they come from one parent, the other half comes from the other parent, so you have 23 chromosomes from father and 23 chromosomes from mother, Together, they make a 46 chromosomes, and each chromosome pairs up with it like chromosomes. So chromosomes appear, appear in pair. Your father's chromosome one is exactly same in appearance as your mother's uh, first chromosome. Your father's chromosome two is same as your mother's chromosome two, and so on and so forth. So the 22 chromosomes are in pairs, and the 23rd chromosome pair exists in females who are obviously XX, and males, since they are XY, so they do not have the pair there. Otherwise, the chromosomes occur in pair. Uh, the chromosomes, uh, the number of chromosomes per species is fixed. We have 46 chromosomes. This is this this uh, this conservation is required because this is this number is this number is conserved for a particular species. Yes, slight changes may occur. A person may have 46 chromosomes, chromosome, for example, in Down syndrome or some disease 45 chromosome, but that again is in the same range. So otherwise, the hum uh, each species having the same uh, a particular number of chromosomes, which is particular for that. Chromosomes, uh, they are cop they need to be copied. So when the chromosomes are copied, the DNA content gets doubled. The process called as replication, and the centromere at the center at, at the joining position of the chromosome, it holds the chromosomes together. The chromosome with its copied part together. So this is this figure actually shows you the chromosome with an extended DNA molecule. So this hole will have one DNA molecule from top to bottom. There will be one DNA molecule. There's a centromere holding here, holding this chromosome together. So this is actually one chromosome. You can also call it at, at it as a single chromatid. 
Now, when it undergoes replication, the DNA copies itself. So this one DNA molecule and another DNA molecule is its copy. So the copied DNA and the, uh, the DNA that it copied from, so they both are arranged together and the chromosome ends up having this appearance. So the, the, the difference in this chromosome and this chromosome is that the DNA content has become twice. So here you have two DNA molecules in the same chromosome. Here you had just one DNA molecule in the chromosome. Why do you have two DNA molecules in this chromosome? Because the DNA underwent replication process. So at the end of mitosis, at the end of nuclear division, this is the centromere. This is the position precisely where a split will occur. So one DNA molecule will separate, its copy will go on to the other side. So one part of this chromosome goes into one cell, the other part goes into the other cell. That's why duplication occurred in this stage. The copy was made so that equal number of DNA molecules and the chromosomes can pass on to both daughter cells. This is the basic idea regarding the chromosome and how it's passed from one generation to the next cell. The length of our DNA molecules is very long, but the thing is that, that they are wrapped in a, very, in a very specific way using histone proteins. And these histone proteins, they allow the wrapping of the, of the uh, DNA molecule in such a way that DNA molecule comes in compact space. So this is how your chromosome actually looks like with the DNA molecule uh, with, uh, with, uh, like wrapped around histone proteins. So this, these are the chromatids, these are the chromatids here. You can see one DNA molecule and its copy here. This is the centromere. And how is it wrapped around? This DNA is wrapped around the histone protein in such a way. These are the beads here. The, each, bead, each cylinder here is basically a nucleosome. What's a nucleosome? Nucleosome is basically a bead made up of histone proteins. So DNA molecule wrap itself around, so it becomes packaged. So how it's wrapping itself around? This is how it wraps itself around. This is the nucleosome. This is the histone protein. So when, you, when the DNA wraps itself around histone protein, the DNA molecule just rolls over this histone protein and it takes two turns on one nucleosome. So, and then it moves to the next, and then the next, and then the next. So this is how the DNA gets packaged. So the difference between chromatin and chromosome or chromatin is the presence or the absence of histone proteins. In chromatin, the DNA, this green part is lying free. Uh, there are no histone protein associated with it. The appearance will be granular. The chromatin will look like dotted structures in the nucleus. But when it gets wrapped around the uh, this nucleosome or the histone proteins, so, so the DNA becomes packaged in compact space and then it will become thick and condensed. And then we do not call it as chromatin, we call it as a chromosome. If it has gone undergone replication, then it will have a copy of itself attached at a centromere. When the chromosome has made its own copy, the, we, we call these as chromatid. So these are sister chromatids. This is one chromatid having one DNA molecule. The other chromatid is also having the same DNA molecule, uh, which is which actually it copied from. So they both are called as sister chromatids. The sister chromatid form because of the centromere holding the sister chromatids together. So there are two chromatids in this chromosome. There is one chromatid in this chromosome here because the DNA replication had not occurred. And after, uh, like during cell division, what actually happens in mitosis, the this, this centromere will split and the one DNA molecule and the sister chromatids will basically, basically will be pulled apart. And they each will be delivered to one of the daughter cells as discussed previously. At the end of your chromosomes, at the end of your DNA, you have a repeat sequence of telomeres. These are called, these basically are repeat sequences of T, T, A, G, 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 G. So these are present here, 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 and here at the edges, at this edge, at this edge, at this edge, and at this edge. So telomeres are present. These are the regions of telomeres and they are different from your genes. So when the telomeres are present, basically the telomeres are present on a linear chromosome. They're not present on a circular chromosome. They prevent gene loss. How do they prevent gene loss? When the DNA replication is being carried out. So DNA replication allows the DNA the molecule to be completely replicated into its copy. But every time a DNA replication occurs or the, the DNA gets copied, some part of the telomere fails to get copied. So some part of it gets clipped off. So every, my, every cell division or every application will actually mean that some part of this telomere will, get, will keep on getting chopped off and clipped off. So the telomere keeps shortening every nuclear division. So how is the, what is the function of the telomere? The telomere uh, is performing some kind of, you can say the uh, sacrificial process that it allow itself to be like lost and it prevents gene loss from occurring. So if, if the telomere was not lost, then the, these actual genes would have been started to get clipped off. So this is the basic, the basic significance of the telomeres in the chromosome. That's it for now. Thank you.